Yeah. Hi, I'm Josh Fulton. And I'm Kat Stewart, and you're watching the first Grade 9 episode of Grammar TV for 2020. Hi, my name's Finn. I'm Lola. I'm Nina. I'm Lachlan. I'm Lily. I'm Josh. I'm Kat. I'm Mia. I'm Mimi. I'm Ella. I'm Asha. I'm Hayden. You're watching Grammar TV. In today's episode, we'll be discussing a few hot topics that have been the talk of the school over the past few weeks. We know many students have been working hard on the upcoming mu musical. Nina Gibson has this story. So I'm Lily and I play Tiffany Houston in Back to the 80s. Lily, describe your character in five words or less. Bubbly, kind, a cheerleader, and your favourite part or song so far? My favourite song so far is probably Kids in, in America just because we know it uh, the most because that's our launch number that we're doing. Um, we've got the dance um, and so seeing it all come together is amazing because it's so fun to do um, and I can't wait to perform it for the launch. Um, I'm Miles and I'm playing the role of Corey Jr in Back to the 80s. Okay, so describe your character in five words or less. Um, he's a teenage boy, uh, he's, he's awkward and he's... What's the basic storyline in your words? Um, so it's about Corey and his life through high school and all his struggles and, you know, love interests that are going on and, yeah. What's your favourite part or song so far? Um, so far probably Love Shack, that's looking really good and it's just a good song as well. Wow, it looks amazing. We hope we can come back when the in the future when the world gets back on its feet. Hey Josh, look at this TikTok that Mr. Webster posted this morning. Cat, quickly hide it before Mr. Webster sees. Oh yeah, sorry. I guess I'm still getting used to having my phone in my locker. As you all know, the school has introduced a phone policy. Peter Strong has this story produced by Brad McGee. With the new school year coming around, Launceston Grammar has made an adjustment to its mobile phone policy. To find out more, we spoke to Mr. Foster about the recent changes. Mr. Foster reinforced that the decision wasn't made lightly and is backed up by international research. There's a lot of research being done around not only Australia but the world on how mobile phones are affecting a whole range of things, not only learning but well-being. If you look at it as it from both learning and wellness, it's, it's, it's such a great impact and there was such a, a desire for us to learn more, we decided to actually survey the students, parents and staff about uh, their feelings. By reducing the temptation of having phones in the classroom, he believes that productivity will increase. You know, people's ability to resist when they hear that ding of a text message or a Snapchat or a notification coming is very hard. And we're having huge issues with people driving in cars, uh, looking at phones. Um, so we know that when you get drawn away from what you're concentrating on, it will affect your ability to learn. No phone zones have been placed all around the school, aiming to encourage face-to-face -face conversation. So the East Quad, the upper school comm room is a phone-able uh, zone for them. The rest of the school is phone-free. We, we acknowledge that students will use their phone to contact parents and parents to contact their students. So you can use your phone at your locker to check in at lunchtime recess, but apart from that, the rest of the school is a phone-free zone. This has been Peter Strong from Grammar TV. Now we need to get serious for a second. Yes, as we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic is taking a large toll on the school staff and students. To make that toll a little smaller, procedures have been put in place to help minimise the spread of this virus. There are only 10 people allowed in the school canteen at a time. All school assemblies, chapels and house meetings have been cancelled until further notice. All sports and extracurricular activities are cancelled until further notice. As said earlier, the production is postponed. In all of this chaos, the cleaners are working overtime to keep us safe. So this story produced by Emmanuel Alfred gives us insight into how we can make cleaners' jobs a little easier so they can keep working and make our school environment safe. Today we're interviewing the Head of Cleaning, Rodney Page. Uh, I've been working at Launceston Church Grammar School for approximately 13 years. The companionship of all the students and they're willing to help out as much as they can, um, people volunteering and um, putting their hands up when they don't get asked, um, and it's just a great environment of students to grow up in. We asked Rodney Page what annoys the cleaners. 
<laughs> rubbish on floors. Students that have a meal on a, a near a bench and walk away and leave their wrappers and their bread crumbs or whatever bread, a bread crust and and drink cups or whatever it be when there's bins very close by. Uh, to make our lives a lot easier, if the students are more or less that are all having meals together and they saw one of their fellow students leaving rubbish on the ground or on the desk and that to just say, right, you know, you don't leave that there. I think there's more respect now for the cleaners than what they used to be. Both boys and girls tend to uh, appreciate the school more uh, and parents that come here, we get a lot of feedback from how clean the school looks. We all need to do our part to make the cleaners' lives a little bit more easier. Emmanuel Alfred, Grammar TV. Next we have a story about the upcoming acoustic night. Here's Brad McGee with a story produced by Astrid Fitzpatrick. On the 14th of February, Grammar's Grade 12s held their second walkathon fundraising event for the year, an acoustic night. The night was a great success, showcasing the musical talents of grammar students both past and present. Here with more information is Nicole Patrick. Acoustic Night was a great success with about $2,000 being raised for the Grandma Walkathon charity Fight MND. As well as some awesome performances, there was a food stall, a drink stall and a really cool plant stall. And there was about 16 acts with alumni Oscar O'Shea and Connell Cassidy as well as Diddy, Diddy Mitchell coming back to perform. It was really great to see all the students and parents and teachers getting around the event and just enjoying a good relaxing evening. One of our upcoming initiatives for a walkathon charity is selling funky socks and probably having a funky sock day. So watch the space for some cool socks coming your way. It's great to hear how well the event went. This has been Brad McGee for Grammar TV. Wow, that looks like a blast. Agreed, but unfortunately the walkathon has been postponed. And that brings a wrap on today's episode of Grammar TV. TV. And remember, stay safe and healthy. Just to hear you.